when I thought we were only going to have four people, I, I would quickly uh, let it go through my mind. How can I uh, shorten this sermon to last only 34 minutes? <laughs> so we now that we're however many we are, not going to not going to do that. Um, as you very well know, there are many things in this world, in this church, uh, that um, are obstacles or stumbling blocks for people in the faith pilgrimage, the pilgrimage of Christianity. Specific problems that hinder people, that burden people, that disturb people, and keep them away from the faith. One of the barriers listed in many people's writings is unanswered prayer. It does seem to be a fact that many people do get discouraged and they give up and drop out of a faith because they feel a sense of failure in their prayer life. It leads me to ask this question, how do you pray? Why pray at all? When do you pray? Is there a special formula or sacred language that you use? Prayer must be more than an emergency magical lamp rubbed in a crisis. The truth is that many people give up on prayer because they never understand what prayer is. Much that passes for prayer is irrational, superstitious, and self-centered, and is therefore unworthy of the pattern of the prayer that Jesus offered to us, his disciples. How do you pray and why? We're not the first to ask. The disciples of Jesus came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray. They saw the power <coughs> of prayer in him. They saw how important prayer was to him. The disciples sometimes were slow on the uptake, but at this point, they were quickly and precisely on target. They saw in Jesus the answer to the question, how do we pray and why do we pray? And they learned from him what the elements are that lead us to a meaningful prayer life. First of all, Jesus prayed regularly, and so can we. <clears throat> he took the time to pray. He made it a vital part of his daily schedule. He disciplined himself to pray regularly. And I know, as you do, something about busy schedules. I know about deadlines. I know about pressures and stresses and demands on our frantic lifestyle. We all live in the same world. But I also know that when we feel we are so busy and our schedules are so hectic and the competition is so fierce and the times are so tough and we can't afford to take time to pray, then that's the moment when we need to pray most of all. Then that's the moment when we can't afford not to take the time to pray. It's been simmered down to, to a very short sentence uh, about prayer and about all things for Christian. The test of our prayer life is, do we want God? Do we want God so much that we will go on and on if it takes five, six, ten years to find Him? There is only one test, really. Do we want God? Everything worthwhile takes time, regular discipline time. Ask any artist, any musician, any athlete, any doctor or lawyer or minister or engineer. It takes time, effort, and determination. You have to plug away at it. It doesn't come overnight. And it doesn't stay with you unless you stay with it. And I think the same thing would be true of prayer. Maybe it just takes a lot of practice, you know. I think it's worth it. If Jesus felt the need to pray regularly, how much more must we need to pray regularly? Second, Jesus prayed sensibly, and so can we. Jesus prayed with intelligent, common sense. He did not use prayer as some magical device to get some selfish wishes. Longfellow said it well, what discord we bring into the universe if all our prayers were answered. 
it gives me pain to hear the long, wearisome petitions of folks asking for senseless things that they do not really need. The poet Longfellow. How senseless to see God as nothing more than a pawn to be used for our own selfish desires. How senseless to picture God as some kind of divine waiter who at our slightest whim rushes off to a heavenly kitchen and then runs back with steaming portions of whatever we've asked for. How senseless to expect God to do for us what we can do for ourselves. Jesus prayed regularly and he prayed sensibly. And so can we. Third, Jesus prayed confidently and so can we. Thy will be done. That was the prayer of Jesus when you get right down to it. And it is a prayer we can pray with confidence because God knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows what we need, what is good for us, better than we know. This is precisely what Garth Brooks is saying in the humorous country song, Thank God for Unanswered Prayer. Do you remember that song? I do. I'm Texan. You know, so I'm <laughs> Likewise, God is a, like a loving parent, knows what is best for his children. Our best is a confident, thy will be done. One of the reasons Jesus prayed confidently was because he saw prayer as friendship with God. Someone once described prayer simply that. Prayer is friendship with God. That's a pretty good definition, I think. Some years ago, there's a story about an elderly Scottish man. In fact, Joan is Scottish, you may know. She gave me this story. And this man was quite ill. The minister came to see the dying man and noticed an empty chair in the, on the opposite side of the bed. The chair was pulled up especially close to the bed. The older man said, I'm going to tell you about this chair. Many years ago, I found it quite difficult to pray. So one day I shared this problem with my minister. He told me not to worry about kneeling or placing myself in some pious position or holding my hands in a certain way or speaking with high-sounding words. Instead, he said, just sit down, put a chair in front of you, and imagine God is sitting there in that chair and just talk to him as you would talk to a friend. And the older man said, and I've been doing that ever since. Some days later, the daughter of the older man called and tell, told the minister that her father had died peacefully in the night. And she said this, for some reason, his hand was on that empty chair on the other side of the bed. Isn't that strange? Well, of course, it's not strange at all. You can understand perfectly. He was reaching out to his best friend. That's what prayer is. It's reaching out to God. It's reaching to our best friend. Jesus prayed regularly, sensibly, confidently, and so should we. Amen.